Hello everyone, my name is Jamie and this is my new channel where I will be sharing everything Scriptcase, development, PHP and much more as we continue on down this rabbit hole. So today I have an exciting video for you, touching on an important topic that can be very easily used with some basic understanding. It is my pleasure today to start with my first video by diving into the amazing world of Scriptcase Forms. Just to provide you with some indication of the power available to you within Scriptcase Forms, you can collect data, you can validate user inputs, and you can even perform complex actions and tasks with just a few clicks or a few lines of code. Forms are an essential part of any web application and Scriptcase makes it super easy to create, manage and supercharge them with some relative ease. There is a great deal to talk about when we just touch on the topic Scriptcase Forms. So today I will be starting with one of the most important topics when it comes to Forms and that would be the Scriptcase form events. One of the great things about Scriptcase forms is the range of events that you can use to add even more functionality to your forms. For, for example, you can use the on record event to perform actions when a new record is displayed in the form. Or you can use the onValidate event to validate user inputs before they are saved to the database. And that's not all. Scriptcase also has powerful built-in AJAX capabilities, which means that you can perform actions in real time without the need to refresh the page. This means that your users can have a seamless and fast user experience when using your forms in production. So whether you are creating a simple contact form or a complex data entry application, Scriptcase forms have got you covered. So just keep watching and see for yourself just how amazing Scriptcase forms can be, how easy it is to develop complex applications. So starting out within Scriptcase, I am here already viewing a form and if I zoom in a little bit, you will be able to see that a little better. And here within the left hand menu, we have here our main form settings. Now here we have then the option for events. And if I click on that, it will expand all of the possible events that are available for the form application. So I'll start off here with the on application in it. So the on application init event is triggered once your application is first loaded. And it is a great way to set global variables, perform database connections, or even redirect the user to a different page based on certain conditions. For example, you can use the on application init event to check if the user is logged in. And if not, you can redirect them to the login page. The next event we have is the on navigate event. The on navigate event is triggered when the user navigates between records within your forms. So from record to record within the form. Of course, we have multi uh, navigation available. So we can go page one, page two, or entry one, entry two. And whenever we navigate between those uh, forms, because that's what they essentially are, is a new form for each new entry using the same form. We can, in such a case, apply an on navigate event and adjust the data or just about any of anything else that we want to apply, such as validations, for instance. The next field we have is the on script init. Now, the on script init event is triggered when a script is first initialized. It is a great place to perform any setup tasks that are specific to a particular script, such as initializing variables or setting up event handlers. If you need to perform any custom logic when a script is first loaded, the on script 
in its event is the place to do it. The next event we have is the on load event. Now the on load event is triggered when a record is loaded into a form. This is a great way to perform actions based on the load of a record, such as setting default values or calculating fields. For example, you might use the on load record event to automatically populate a field with the current date and time, for instance, or to perform a database query based on the data in the record being loaded. The next event we have is then here the on load event. So the on load event is triggered every time a form is loaded. And it is a great way or great place even to initialize variables, perform conditions. For example, you can use the on load event to set the default value of a field based on the current date and time. And you can see here in this example, I already have an onload event uh, available or displayed. Okay, so here I am saying if the quote is sent, so one or zero, or if there is a status above seven, then we will display the button sent, or it will be off. Okay, so be off, or it will be on. Essentially, we hide then those buttons and we can then perform these types of actions within the on load event. So the next event is the on refresh event. The on refresh event is triggered when a user refreshes the form or a grid, for instance. This is a great place to perform actions based on a refresh event such as updating fields or possibly recalculating data that we have within the form. For example, you might use the on refresh event to automatically update a date field to reflect the current date and time. This event can also be used to update fields based on user input or perform other actions that are triggered by this refresh event. The next event we have is the on validate event. And the on validate event is triggered before a record is saved. And it's a great place to perform validations again on the data entered within your form. For example, you can use the on validate event to check if a required field is filled in or if the data entered any field is valid. You can also use this event to change the data that has been submitted. For instance, you could take a value from a form field and within the on validate event, you can make adjustments or additions to that that has been entered. So then we also have here the on validate failure. And the on validate failure event is triggered when the on validate event fails. So the previous event. When that fails and a record cannot be saved, that is when the on validate failure event is triggered. So this can be used to display an error message to the user or preventing the user from leaving the form until the form fields or errors have been corrected. So then the next event is the on validate success, which is obviously the opposite from our on validate failure event. So the on validate success event is triggered when the on validate event is a pass or it succeeds and the record has successfully been saved. Okay, so it has to be saved. This is an important step there. So this is a great place to perform actions based on the success of the save such as displaying a success or completion message to the end user. You can also apply your calculations and more to this event before the form is inserted into the database. So again, we can make adjustments to our entered data within the form within 
either of these on validate events. So that could be on validate, on validate failure, in which case it has failed. So we may want to make an alternative change there to the on validate and on validate success. Okay, so then the next event that we have is the on before insert. And we have a few of these. We have on before insert all, on before, or sorry, on after insert all, on before update, on after update, and a lot of these are very similar. So the on after insert event is triggered when a new record is successfully inserted into your form. This is a great way to perform actions based on the successful insertion of a new record, such as updating of a field or, again, displaying a success message to the end user. Now, the on after delete event, for instance, this event is triggered when a record is successfully deleted from your form. So when you click the delete button within your form, this event is then triggered. And it is a great place to perform actions based on the successful deletion of a record, such as updating other fields or tables, or again displaying a success message to the end user. And we have then also other events such as the on after update and on before update. And the on after update event is triggered when a record has successfully been updated from your form. This is a great place to perform actions based on the successful update of a record, such as updating other fields or displaying a success message to the end user again. So the on before update all event is triggered before multiple records are updated within the form. This is a great place to perform actions that should be executed before multiple records are updated or inserted, such as validating data or displaying a confirmation message to the end user. For example, you might use the on before update all event to check that all of the records being updated are valid or to prompt the user to confirm that they want to make the relevant changes. And of course, a lot of these events are very similar, again, on before delete, on after update, on before update, and so forth. So they are all related in some shape or form. They either happen before the insert, before the update, before the delete, or after the insert, update, or delete. Now, last but not least, let's talk very quickly about the AJAX events. And these are available just below the main form events. Now, AJAX events are a powerful way to perform actions without reloading the entire page. For example, you can use an AJAX event to update a field or perform a database query without reloading the entire page. This makes your application seem faster and definitely more responsive. So to check out the AJAX events, we simply need to choose it here within the folder and it will expand as it just has done. And here you can already see that I have a few events available here. So if I check on one of these here for the ID client, when the field changes, then I am making some adjustments. So if the field is empty, then I am displaying the field lead on. If it's not empty, then I will switch it off, okay? Or the form switches it off. And for us to create a new AJAX event, we simply need to choose here the new AJAX event within the folder. And then here we can then select what type of event we want to apply to our field. So we can choose here, first of all, the field. So here, for instance, I have the ID lead again. And I can choose here the event for AJAX processing. And there, because I already have an on change event, it is grayed out. But otherwise, I still have the on click, on blur, and on focus events available to me for this AJAX event. And of course, if I choose a different field, for instance, here the quote title, I have then the on change event available. 
Now, below the event selection, we also have the option to pass parameters. Okay, so I can select here one of my other fields that is available within the form and have that selected as well as then the event type. And I can pass that value or that field value directly to this event as a parameter. Okay, and there I just need to double click it so that it has then the star just to the left of that. And there you have it, a comprehensive informational guide to the events that are available in Scriptcase. Now, whether you are a seasoned pro or just starting out, mastering events is a great way to take your applications to the next level. So before we finish up, do be sure to continue checking out some of the other videos. We have a great deal more to cover with the form for informational purposes. And of course, we will also check out some of these features as well as the events within the examples and platforms that we will be developing as we continue on within this channel. So thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Scriptcase by Jamie tutorials.